Welcome to St. Alphonsus Wellcast, the podcast where we explore the many facets of health and well-being. This podcast is brought to you by St. Alphonsus Corporate Health and Well-Being and a generous grant from the St. Alphonsus Foundation. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the St. Alphonsus Wellcast. This is Kim Cleveland. I'm a nurse practitioner with St. Alphonsus Corporate Health and Wellbeing Department. And today we are continuing our series with the St. Alphonsus Brain Health Program Memory Center. And today I have back with me Dr. Kara Kuntz, who is a geriatrician and the medical director of the Memory Center. And we have a very fun topic to talk about today, something very thought-provoking, interesting, and it may provide everybody with a different um, lens of how they view aging and cognitive decline, among other issues, and and sort of provide a different perspective in, in living as well. Um, the topic today is courageous aging. Thank you so much for coming on today, Kara. Yes, thank you for having me, Kim. Yeah, so let's intro it. Let's just get in. <laughs> okay, okay. Courageous aging. Yeah, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. As I was telling you, I was on a hike with a friend of mine who's also a physician recently, and I was talking about this constant challenge I see my patients facing where they come to me and they are frustrated because their body doesn't work the way it used to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're, you know, early in this frustrating journey for them where they're just now starting to realize they can't hike as much as they used to. And so they're really cutting back and they're frustrated. And and then I see people who are pretty advanced in their aging process and this feeling that their body isn't working like they want it to. Mm -hmm. And they're depressed. Mm -hmm. And I ask them, what do you do with your free time? And they say, oh, I watch a lot of TV now watch a lot of news. We talk about how the news causes anxiety. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe that's, you know, maybe we need to reduce that in our life. But, um, but I try to get to, you know, what else do you do for fun? What do you do for a sense of joy? And they can't think of anything in that moment or very few things. And so then I say, well, tell me about 20 years ago. What did you used to do? Mm -hmm. And a whole list of things come up, right? Like I used to ski, I used to bike, I used to hunt, fish, make art, Sing, dance, the list goes on and on, right? But they don't do any of those things anymore. Yeah. Because they can't do them at the level they used to do them. And so they either stop all at once altogether because of that frustration that their performance isn't what it once was, and maybe they're a real competitive person. We see that a lot. Or they stop gradually over time. So I just keep thinking, like, how do we help these individuals continue to do the things they love despite their body changing? Mm Mm-hmm. So I started thinking about how, boy, that it does take a lot of courage. It takes courage to choose to do things we love despite not being able to do them at the way we once could because that probably gave us a sense of purpose. Part of our identity is, right, I do this well. I'm good at X. And when I'm not good at it anymore, if it doesn't meet your level of expectation, mm-hmm. then, then maybe they don't want to do it at all because it makes them feel frustrated or bad about themselves but boy isn't that missing out like, yeah yeah I mean you know I, I think just being in in my age demographic and you know certainly younger than than many aging adults who are suffering with this but seeing you know just different oscillations over the last 10 15 years even you know the way things have changed and the way life circumstances have changed and and how things have looked differently I you know I can I can relate to some of these older individuals who may be feeling with that. And then I also feel maybe even a sense of fear or concern about when, when that happens to me or the, those around me. And, and it is a, um, it is an important thing to consider what, what you want your life to look like and and how to incorporate things that you truly do love. Right. Yeah. I'm glad we're talking about this because I feel like the sooner we start thinking about the reality that our body is going to change as we age and prepare for the future, the better equipped we'll be to handle those changes, right? I also am starting to, to have feelings uh, of aging. You know, I'm in my mid-40s and I have arthritis. Mm-hmm. I have joint pain in my wrists and my hands and my ankles and I love to ski and bike and I've had to start modifying some of my activities, right? Mm -hmm. I used to love to downhill ski, and now I cross-country ski instead Mm -hmm. because it's not as hard on my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same with my choice of trails when I'm biking. And while that's frustrating to me, 
while it makes me feel quote unquote old, yeah. <laughs> uh, should I let my ego around being old get in the way of me doing the things I love? Should I, should I keep persevering until I've like worn my joints out and then they really can't do anything? Or do we start to recognize that our body has some limits and that maybe we need to modify our activity so that we can continue to do things we love as long as possible? But I don't say this lightly because I know this is a big task. And that's why I came to you with this title of Courageous Aging for this conversation today because I do think it takes great courage Mm -hmm. to age with joy. Mm -hmm. You know, so what is the definition of courage? One that I looked up said the ability to do something that frightens one. Mm -hmm. Another person that talks a lot about courage is Brene Brown. Do you know her? Yeah, I love her. (laughs) Yeah, she's fantastic, right? Yeah. She's a social worker. She has a podcast. She's an author. She's just a well-respected professional in the arena of um, all things resilience, resilience, shame, vulnerability, courage. shame, yes, all yep. the things. Yeah, yeah. And she talks a lot about how a courageous person knows how to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking about, you know, what what is courageous aging? And I would say it would mean to age courageously would mean we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, own the things our body struggles to do with age, talk about it with others, and while it frightens us to see that our body's changing, find ways to live our life with joy and purpose anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? So like be brave, be courageous to accept the changes that are happening now and will happen in the future in your body. Mm-hmm. And don't let those stop you from finding joy and purpose in your life. Yeah. 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 How powerful, right? To, to do that. And and then I love too just the idea of thinking about it sooner rather than later and and the proactivity and the way you can prepare yourself for what you may experience in the future and, and kind of go forth with a, maybe even a plan or just an idea or even a feeling that you want to embody as you notice these things changing. Right. Yeah. You know, I know you've had my colleague, Dr. Abalash Desai on, and he's talked about preventative health for the brain specifically as, Mm -hmm. you know, we're starting our memory center and a brain health program embedded in that. And he talks a lot about prevention in that podcast you did with him. I talk all the time about prevention. Yes, we should be doing everything we can to prevent our body and our mind from having, you know, limitations to whatever degree we can. (laughs) But we are mortal, right? Right, yeah. We will deteriorate <laughs> so at some level. Preventative health yeah. is important. Yeah, preventative health is important, but we have to accept that there are limitations to our mind and our body and to make a plan, you know? What could some of those pr- plans look like? Well, as I talked, for me, one is not stopping the activities lo- you love, but modifying them in a way mm-hmm. that's less hard on your body or isn't quite as taxing. Maybe you don't stop hiking altogether, but you hike during the time of day when you're not going to be so affected by the heat. So early and late, maybe you don't go as far as long or as steep, but you still go, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and thinking about how you prepare your body and take care of your body afterwards. Mm -hmm. So stretching before stretching after my husband's two years older than me. I'm still Constantly telling him he needs to stretch. He's yeah. constantly surprised <laughs> when things hurt after he overexerts himself. And I'm like, did you stretch? Did you stay hydrated today? You know, right, the, these yeah. key concepts aren't things we used to have to, have to do when we were younger, but, mm-hmm. but now they matter. You know, um, when it comes to mobility, our body really needs to be warmed up, loosened up before we really ask a lot of it and then Mm -hmm. it needs sort of a wind down Mm -hmm. and um and we can get our connective tissues kind of bound up Mm -hmm. and so learning how to do some Mm self-massage i mean if we can all afford to go to massage weekly that would be great right right most people can't afford that but Mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to do Mm self-massage with tools like theracanes Mm -hmm. there's these massage chairs you can get there's all kinds of tools on amazon or wherever else that you Mm want to look to find ways to to self-massage yourself just a good old tennis ball behind your back up against the wall Mm -hmm. muscle rubs heat um all of this 
really matters and really helps with maintaining our, our function. And then, of course, listening to our body. If it starts to ache, slow down, do less, recover. Right. But don't stop. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't do it. And then mentally, you know, our brain will age and our function of our uh, brain, our cognitive ability will change. But boy, we know the research shows us that one way to reduce, slow down, stave off dementia is to stay mentally, emotionally, socially active. Mm -hmm. So if you start to feel feelings of cognitive slipping, some early memory loss, A, of course, go see your provider and, and get checked out. But B, don't stop engaging with people because your disease will progress faster. We really need you to keep staying active socially, mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, phys and physically, of course. But now we've moved on to, you know, mental wellness um, because that helps us maintain the neural pathways that we have and build new ones. Mm -hmm. Even while our brain has may have dementia or be moving into early stages of dementia, there still is some neuroplasticity there. You know, we can still build new neural pathways. But if you withdraw, if you go into social isolation because of the fear that you're having around these changes in your body, your dementia will progress faster. Yeah. So you have to be brave back to this courageous aging. You, you must be one with tremendous courage to keep engaging with your friends and your church and your social s circles despite your changes and be brave to tell them what's going on with you and ask them to support you in your journey. Again, I don't say this lightly. I know this is a huge ask, especially in our culture where mm -hmm. dementia is so stigmatized. Mm -hmm. But man, if we could change that and not be afraid to live and engage with people having changes in their mental cognitive function, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it would do us all a lot of good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I hear a lot of um, folks, both, you know, family members with a loved one with dementia and then also folks with dementia themselves. You know, there is a lot of fear there of, of how to interact and, um, you know, people who are maybe supporting the person with dementia don't always know how to talk to the individual with mm -hmm. The cognitive slipping and whatnot, they don't want to make them feel badly or right. or maybe they don't know what they'll remember or won't remember or maybe they just withdraw out of, um, you know, inconvenience and things. And it's right. it's hard to see and it's hard to see how that that disengagement does, in fact, affect the individual who's aging. Um, and then also the, the loved one as well who's missing out on some of that social connection with someone that they care very much about. But, yeah, what a... What a gift that is to yourself and to your loved ones if you continue to maintain that relationship and that engagement. Right. And if we as a community could sort of normalize the fact that our yes. bodies change and our brains change and we're still human, that humans that need to be whole in terms mm -hmm. of social, physical, mental interaction, we need all of those stimuli to our brain at all stages. Right. So supporting each other in that process. Um and just being willing to talk about it so that we don't feel like we have to hide. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, I, and you're, you know, as a loved one, if you're younger and you have a, a loved one who does is aging and you want to maintain that relationship, you know, it does it is mutually beneficial as well. You know, it, it can give you really vital information and um, perspective, too, as you go through the process also. So it's it's not strictly an altruistic endeavor to engage with with those who are going through that process as well um but you know I, I do have you know a lot of questions come to mind too about culturally in terms of what this looks like in other areas of the world and and what we might have to learn or glean from from other cultures and how they approach um, the aging process as well I don't know if you have any insight or thought about that but it is something that sort of comes to mind. Yeah, no question. I mean, just thinking culturally, right? We live in a country where the young are idolized yeah. and, and the old are considered to be uh, less valuable. And there are other countries and cultures where um, as we age, we gain status yeah, uh, and are seen as wise and having, um, you know, being the ones looked to for advice and the leaders in the community mm -hmm. and in a community, in a culture where that doesn't happen as much or as easily, you know, we just, it would serve us well to create space 
for that mm-hmm. and think about the fact that one day we'll be in that position ourselves, right? Yeah. And, and how nice it might be if space were created for us to maintain vitality as we age. Things like creating opportunities for purpose and work mm-hmm. as we age, right? Mm-hmm. People retire, uh, but ageism is a really thing, a really big thing when those people that retire then try to reenter the workforce mm-hmm. and have a hard time getting a job oh, because yeah. of ageism. You know, be it volunteer opportunities or, or paid working opportunities, you know, creating space for that. Even for individuals dealing with cognitive impairment, we want to create space for them to have purpose and meaning in their life to engage in work and volunteer opportunities. Mm-hmm. And then creating space and time for people with mobility mm-hmm. uh, challenges. Mm-hmm. We're in such a hurry yeah. in this country, right? Yeah. You know, so if you see somebody who's struggling with mobility and walking slower, take it as an invitation to slow down yourself. Right. Maybe we don't all need to be moving so fast. And, right. And uh, let's create time and space for that person to take longer to get through the door that you're trying to get through as well or uh, knowing that one day that will be you and just being grateful that people are out and about and and we need to be allowed to move all at our own different paces so that we all feel welcome to be out moving what a concept you know (laughs) in terms of we are in a hurry and and youth is definitely idolized in this in our country for sure I'm hearing so much there that I resonate with for sure Um, if you had, you know, one recommendation for people who are going through the aging process or one, one thought or or feeling that you'd like for them to consider, um, when trying to continue on with their, with their normal, their normal life or things that they really enjoy doing, like, what would that thought be? What would you give to them as that piece of advice? Boy, Kim, you asked for one. I know. It's hard for me to boil yeah, it or down to yeah. one. Yeah, I want to say a couple things. So thank you for the time to do that. So the first is, I know that aging is difficult. You know, I had a grandmother who lived to be 97, and she oh, always wow, said, yeah. aging isn't for sissies. Yeah. And, you know, it's always trying to acknowledge that it's it's it feels hard, you know, in lots of different ways to age. And I, I get that. Um, but to continue and as I mentioned look for ways to modify and still be able to do the things you love having joy in our daily and weekly lives is essential Mm -hmm. and so this is my biggest take-home message right do not lose your joy think about what is what is it that brings you purpose and joy in your life and do everything you can to preserve that yeah and if you have to modify modify lastly I want to say, for some people, the adjustment to aging is so difficult that it does cause real mental illness, Mm -hmm. whether it's quote unquote adjustment disorder, Mm -hmm. grief, Mm -hmm. or depression. It can become very severe for some people. So if that's you, know that that's common. Yeah. And please get help for that. Yeah. You know, some people do go through the five stages of grief with aging. I'll just list them quickly. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and hopefully for some of those people, eventually acceptance so that they can move on to figuring out how to live with this new body that they have. But nonetheless, if those feelings resonate with you, if you're going through those feelings now related to your changing aging body, don't be ashamed to seek out a counselor for grief counseling around aging. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not just when we lose a loved one that we mm-hmm. grieve, we, we grieve the loss of all kinds of things mm-hmm. and our body's function is one of those. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure to say that, that, you know, m- mental illness around the aging process is, is a common and real thing. So please seek help for that. Yeah. Uh, if doing it uh, uh, alone isn't working for you. Oh, for sure. So important to recognize and normalize all of the experiences and then also to be able to, um, no, when it's it's something that you need help for as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your expertise and for your insight and, and sharing this topic of courageous aging. And, and I love how you've highlighted the importance of doing the things you love for the sake of loving them without necessarily an outcome attached and other than your own joy and personal fulfillment. And, yeah. and, uh, and the courage it takes to do that is, is so real. 
So thank you so much for that insight. And then as always, um, we are medical providers. We are not your medical provider. So please seek help and care from your own provider should you have any questions. But then certainly we are available as a resource here at St. Alphonsus in the Brain Health Memory Center program, as well as um, we have primary care providers and other clinics available to meet the needs that you may have. So please reach out to us at sawellness at stalphonsus.org. And then we will provide in the show notes um, a link to the Memory Center page page should you or a loved one um, if you feel you may benefit from the services there and the resources available. So thank you so much for joining us again today. This has been super fun to discuss these various topics with with all the folks over at the the Brain Health Program. So thank you so much, Kara, for your time. Yeah, thanks for having us, Kim. Have a good one. Hopefully we'll have you on again. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of St. Alphonsus Wellcast. Brought to you by St. Alphonsus Corporate Health and Wellbeing and the St. Alphonsus Foundation. Always be sure to catch new episodes by subscribing to us through all major podcast platforms, including Apple, Google, and Spotify. We hope you'll tune in again. Until then, be well.